asked, and we now move to the next question. Baroness Quinn. I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Minister Lord Goldsmith of Richmond Park. Uh, my Lords, the Government has repeatedly made it clear to water companies that the uh, current number of sewage discharges is totally unacceptable. My counterpart in the other house um, has made this very clear directly to the CEOs of the water companies. Government and regulators are working with the industry as part of the Storm Overflows Task Force and the Environment Agency in Offwat have launched a major investigation into sewage discharges from sewage treatment works. Andres Quinn. Uh, my Lords, this past week has seen the publication of the report by Surfers Against Sewage detailing the increase in sewage, sewage discharges with the result that uh, one out of every six days in the swimming season was declared unswimmable. And there are also the reports which the Minister has just referred to of the new investigations of widespread unpermitted releases of sewage by water companies but now being admitted to by them. Given the urgency of the situation, uh, has the Minister, beyond what he said in his concluding remarks uh, on the Environment Bill, any updates on the timescale for progressively reducing sewage discharges and indeed for bringing forward its own plan currently scheduled for next September or any other new measures it's planning? Uh, first of all, I'd like to, to, to very much agree with, with the comments of the, the Noble Baroness and, and strongly welcome the Surfers Against Sewage work. They, they really work wonders putting this issue to the top of the political agenda where it belongs. Um, and, and on the back of, of that pressure, I think this House mobilized in a very effective way and that strengthened the hands of those people in government who are very keen to push the issue further. Um, on timescale, we, we can use our, our direct, or well, the government can use its direction making powers in the drainage and sewage management plans to direct companies to take more action if needed, and we will uh, provide further definition of what that means and, and the ambition that we're working to in early 2022, so a few months' time. Alice Browning. What um, has my noble friend's department done to look at the need to improve infrastructure? For example, separating out far water from surface water so that the capacity is reduced on this foul water that needs to be discharged. Has his department got a plan? Has it been costed? And is there a timetable? My Lords, one of the things that the Government uh, committed to in the passage of the Environment Bill now Act was to conduct an assessment of what it would cost to eliminate storm overflows, but also separately, because it is a different question, to eliminate the harm from storm overflows. We don't know yet what the cost of the form would be. The estimates are very wildly from $150 billion to $600 billion. We don't know what the cost will be uh, or even where the opportunities are, but that is the purpose of the study that's been conducted and will act on the results of that study as a matter of urgency. Virtual contribution, Lord Campbell Savers. My Lords, I have a very simple question. I cannot understand how the government can trumpet the privatisation of water as a success when companies like United Utilities not only unsettle whole populations by, by failing to control their assets and stop flooding in Lake District towns like Keswick, but also following flooding, seem blind when their sewage plants overflow, fail, and then pollute lakes like Lake Bastonthwaite, destroying local wildlife. For how long do we have to tolerate these excesses and failures? Uh, my Lords, the Government is committed to the private model, supported by strong independent economic regulation, and that bit's the key. We have no plans to bring, in, uh, uh, bring water into public ownership, but, but equally, holding a, a near-monopoly license to provide these services is clearly a privilege, and the Government and regulators have high expectations on the behaviour of owners and investors, and that is now reflected in the toughest laws this country has ever had in relation to our water quality. And that's big well of Huntington Mandible. My Lord, Southern Water is named by far the largest culprit amongst the water companies in the report after the company issued 1,949 sewage discharge notifications from a total of 5,517 around Britain. This accounted for 35% of all incidents from nine water companies. They have already been fined but appear unrepentant. How is the government going to bring Southern Water into line given that fines do not appear to be a deterrent. 
Uh, Lords, we, we are, we've made it clear to the water industry, including, of course, Southern Water, um, that they need to reduce the adverse impacts of all sewage discharges, whether treated or untreated, and they need to do so as a matter of urgency. In addition, the sector will need to demonstrate year-on-year -year progress in meeting those targets, and where those targets are not met, what the government has, will have no hesitation whatsoever in stepping in uh, and using all the tools at its disposal. My Lords, I would like to thank my noble friend and his department and his officials for all the support that they have given on this issue during the passage of the Environment Bill and, and the amendment um, from the Duke of Wellington, which was finally accepted. And I welcome the investigation into the sewage discharges. Could my noble friend comment on whether he agrees that a ban on wet wipes would significantly improve the ability of water companies to manage sewage treatment more effectively, and if he does agree, when any such measures could be anticipated? Uh, Noble Vanus makes a really important point, and there's no doubt that wet wipes um, can be a, a really serious contributing factor to overflows at treatment works. The so DEFRA has already announced a call for evidence, uh, and that will explore among other things, a possible ban on the single-use wet wipes, or at least those that contain plastic. Um, and I can assure the noble Baroness that whatever the outcomes of that call for evidence, uh, we are absolutely determined and willing to do whatever is necessary. Baroness Jones of Whitchurch. My Lords, the Chair of the Environment Agency, Emma Howard Boyd, uh, has said recently that the directors of water companies that are guilty of repeated, deliberate or reckless breaches of environmental law uh, should be struck off uh, and potentially given custodial sentences. Can I ask, does the Minister agree with her? And if so, what is the Government doing to ensure that individual directors responsible for these environmental crimes pay the right penalty for those actions? Yeah. Um, my Lords, that, I was not aware of her suggestion, but it sounds like a very good idea uh, and one that I will convey back to colleagues in the Department. But the, the, the cumulative effect of the Environment Bill Now Act combined with the direction provided to Ofwat just a few months ago means that we do have more tools to deal with these issues than we have ever had in the past. And the government has been very clear, both publicly but also directly with the water companies, that we are absolutely uh, are, are willing and, where necessary, will use the tools that we have at our disposal. My, own, uh, <clears throat> my Lords, would my noble friend agree that our forebears who built our sewage system sought to work with nature so as to reduce tremendously the amount of sewage discharge into natural water courses, but not to eliminate it, that the cost of going for total elimination at this stage would now be enormous, and that it is important to consult the consumer before any dramatic pledges are made uh, to see where he or she would like to uh, put this in their, in, their, in their scheme of priorities. The, the Noble Lord makes a really important point, and, and that's why we and many campaigners talk not about eliminating the uh, uh, overflows, but eliminating the harm from the overflows. And that allows us then to make more use of the kinds of natural systems that Noble Lord has mentioned, reed bed systems, for example, which purify the water as it re-enters circulation. That would not be possible were we to eliminate overflows. But the key is eliminating harm, and that's what we're focusing on. Lord Twitty. My Lords, would the Minister accept that unauthorised discharges of untreated sewage will continue unless the regulators of this industry significantly up their game? I declare a past interest as a board member of both agencies in the past, but I think we did it rather better. Off what need to assign part of the capital allowance to, to sewage treatment, and the EA, in particular, the Environment Agency, need to monitor and enforce the rules, which, as the Minister says, are now there, but they need staff to enforce them. When will the decline in the numbers of field staff of the Environment Agency be reversed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my Lords, the Environment Agency, like, like all public bodies, had to make uh, difficult spending decisions in 2015, but since 2015, the agency has brought uh, nearly 50 prosecutions against water companies, secured fines of over £136 million, including £90 million fine for Southern Water. Uh, and DEFRA and its agencies have also received a billion pound increase in overall funding at the spending review. And given that this is a government priority, much of that resource will be spent tackling this issue. Lord Dortz. Can the Minister tell the House what calculation the Government has made of the economic and ecological cost 
caused by the continued discharge of untreated sewage into coastal waters and inland waterways? And does he recognise that if the Victorians had taken the approach of the government and apparently Lord Moylan, they would have determined that laying the original sewage network was prohibitively expensive and we would be still throwing our waste into the street? <laughs> I think the noble lord is, is wrong about that. There, there, there is, and, and I'm sure he'd be the, the first to, to applaud um, the use of nature-based solutions in treating uh, sewage runoff uh, around the country. And, and actually, the, the noble lord Moylan, I think, was advocating a continuation of that approach because it's much cheaper. It has all kinds of benefits that go beyond simply purifying the water. And it is preferable, I think, to spending potentially unprecedented sums of money in other ways.